Welcome back. Welcome to February and our new set, or at least our new props. Here we have our latest member of the crew, Jasper. He is, uh, uh, he was going to be a crystal skull, but um, it's really, really expensive, so we had one made out of Jasper instead, which is some kind of stone. So this is Jasper, our latest addition. This is our typical uh, cheap foam alien head. Um, I don't believe this one had a name, but we might think of one later. And he is wearing the Epic headset. This is the emotive headset, they call it, from Epic, or vice versa. Anyway, very interesting device, a little mind control thing. Actually works, uh, you know, has limitations. But anyway, we'll go, we'll have a whole show dedicated just to this device um, in a bit. Anyway, these are our two new props. Jasper and the nameless alien. Uh, I'd like to start off by reminding people, uh, especially those of you who ask me questions, that on occasion I will answer the question that you really asked instead of the question you thought you asked. And I do this even though it confuses many people just because it makes me giggle. So um, let me give you an example of that. Let's say you ask, does this mawashi make me look fat? No. Okay. Mawashi. Google it. All right. So, um, uh, first off, uh, I pissed off a couple people last show, uh, as I always do. So, um, yes, Sylvia Earl. You listed Sylvia Earl as a female that you looked up to. Uh, actually, if you know Sylvia Earl, you'll most likely be looking down. But you know, hey, that's another that's another um, joke. Um, let's see, you were less than generous with Marilyn Vos Savant, not true. Uh, what would you say, what would I say, is the greatest female contribution to the world so far? Now, um, <laughs> interestingly, I have put a, a, quite a lot of thought into that. And there's quite a number of things that comes down to this. I like cheese. So I'm going to say cheese is the finest uh, female contribution of all time. Okay, so uh, glad we got that out of the way. Ah, uh, yes. My fiancé Stephen and I have a disagreement about our wedding. I need everything to be perfect, so of course. Blah, 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 blah. Does this make me a control freak? P.S. Don't give me any of your stupid parables, just a yes or no answer. All right. Then um, the answer you're looking for is no. That does not make you a control freak. In fact, it's completely understandable that you want everything to go just right on your special day. However, I want you to imagine yourself in this scenario. You have a rat problem. You go to the store and you buy a bunch of rat poison, but you don't use it right away. All right. So let's say when you decide to use it, you go and you find that the rats have broken into the past package that you bought of rat poison and eaten it already. So tell me, how does that make you feel? Did that piss you off? Right. Mm, I have a problem at work. Most of our air ducts are not ninja compliant. Some are too small to move through and others are too noisy to use. Who can I complain to? Okay, you must have me mistaken for someone else. I look forward to his rational reply. Okay, oh boy. Uh, yes, happy new millennium. I'm actually glad you brought up the date thing again. Um, I don't want to get into any of those debates, but I thought you might have an opinion on this. When is it too late to say happy millennium? Shouldn't that be good for the rest of our lives? Um, happy new millennium. Um, as far as the rest of our lives, let's see. Um, no, 
I, I guess it really depends on um, it depends on how long you plan to live. Because uh, if you look at it like this, uh, let's say you stop saying Happy New Year, maybe a week into the new year, hopefully, uh, unless some, someone you haven't seen in quite a while, let's say a week, that means that the, um, that means that if you divide the same time period into a millennium, that is to say about, uh, you know, 50, then that would give you uh, 20 years in which you could say happy new millennium. Um, yeah, and uh, even that, you know, I got to tell you, that would be stretching it. Um, even, at, even at that, you'd only have 10 years left. So no, no, not for the rest of your life unless you're pretty old. Um, now, I, I, I realize that it's difficult to come up with a new greeting every 20 years or so. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you go with the age, because an age is, is quite a lot longer than a millennium, being as that we have just started the age of Aquarius, give or take, because remember, the, the great thing about the ages is no one really agrees when they started. So you could say that probably you could get away with saying happy dawning of the age of Aquarius for the rest of your life without without ever having to wonder if you sound like a complete ass. So I'd go with that. Right, so anyway, next. Uh, concerning thruster versus bonzer, the difference is two skegs. Right, okay, yes, uh, got that, thanks. Uh, but I wasn't really asking about the physical difference. I was really kind of referring to the application. Okay, like, all right. Okay, so, um, <laughs> I know you're not a big religious fan. Oh, never said that, never said that. Uh, but what do you think about the ACOG guys putting religious references on our scopes? Would you say that we are fighting a religious war? Uh, well, of course you're fighting a religious war. You know, let's get that out of the way right off. Um, it's not, it's not a war against Muslims, okay? And just, just like, just like the Christians didn't believe that Bill Clinton wanted to kill them when he went after the Davidians, neither should the Muslims think we're out to kill them because we're going after the radical nutheads, okay? Because it's a totally different thing. But yes, it is a religious war because one side of it, uh, you know, goes around yelling, infidels die, and you can't really pretend it's not religious when they're doing that, okay? Um, okay, so uh, to, to uh, get right to the hub of the question, though, I looked up the uh, sites, I looked up the references on the ACOG sites, and they're just cheesy little references to, like, light, divine light, whatever. And that's a little pun from the uh, Trejicon guys. They make radioactive lights that go in your sights. So, you know, yeah. Um, my preference would be, uh, quote, something from the Quran, saying, for example, uh, it's okay to kill terrorists, or it's not okay to kill innocent people. I'm not a big uh, reader of the Quran, so I don't know uh, which passages that would be. I, I don't really read the Bible either, but if I was to use a Bible verse, um, I would use probably Matthew 1034, where it says, um, I, uh, Jesus says, actually, I come not bearing peace, but a sword. I've, I've come to set brother against brother and father against son. Okay, yes, Jesus said that. He, he really wasn't the pussy that most uh, religions make him out to be. In fact, he was the uh, son of the Hebrew god of war, whose name was Yahweh at the time. In fact, his name wasn't Jesus either, but here nor there. Um, so, at any rate, yeah, that's the one I would pick. Matthew 10.34, look it up if you care. Right. Well, enough about that. I'm not going to uh, turn this into a history show or a religious show, so let's just go ahead and remind everybody before we sign off to send your questions to ask at rationalmanshow.com. Again, that's rationalmanshow, don't forget the show, dot com. See you next week.